here we are in Europe, nine o'clock in the morning, and I'm having a conversation with Perola Colleen, world champion bridge from Sweden. Hi, Perola. Welcome. Hi, on. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you are a bridge player, but you are doing more in life. Enlighten us, please. Yes. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a lawyer uh, since 2007. And, and, and if I would define myself, that would be it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm first and foremost a lawyer. Of course, I, uh, I also play a lot of bridge. Uh, and for a while, in the beginning of the millennia, I was, I was playing poker for a living a couple of of years until I wasn't a winning player anymore and I got my degree and started uh, to work. Okay. Um, if you are looking at online bridge, which is very uh, actual right uh, these days, uh, could you make a living out of that? I, I think I could if, if, if I put my heart into it and like, and, and, and put like a full-time effort into it but now i uh, i have my daytime job so i uh, i only play some in the evenings and, and that's it but i think i could that was my like goal um and who is your bridge partner uh i play with mario michelson since i think 2014 we started playing uh, after a conversation in in Copenhagen, uh, and she's from the from the Netherlands, as you well as you well know. Uh, sure. She lives in Stockholm since since a long time now. So, so I consider her Swedish also now. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm sure she um, she speaks rather good Swedish nowadays. Yes, and but she even plays better bridge and and. I understand that you try to reach the Swedish Open team. Uh, yes, and and we were even picked to play last year in uh, in Madeira, so it was it was extra tough to to see it cancelled because of the the virus. Yeah, so obviously uh, Marion can uh, keep her grounds with men. Um, as a female player, which is not that usual, there are a few only, but um, yeah. I think she is one of the best players, uh, even uh, amongst uh, men. But, so you obviously made a good pick there. I did. Yeah. But um, what what system do you play with her? Uh, we adopted the system that I used to play with Johan Upmark, her, uh, her partner in life. Uh, it's it's a strong club system with relays. Uh, and uh, and it's pretty complicated, but but she learned it like extremely fast. I, I, I was I was surprised. I mean, we could practice the bidding in, in a, after two days of of uh, system notes reading, which was very impressive. Yes, well, it depends a little bit uh, how many pages those notes were. <laughs> the, there are many pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. No, I, I know uh, Marion uh, quite well, and uh, I was at one stage uh, when she was still 19 years old in a team with her, and we uh, immediately won a, a bronze medal at a European Championship. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. Well, it was mixed, but still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I I remember the first time I saw Marion. It was in uh, in China. I was playing. I was playing the University Championships in in. Um, I think it was Tianjin in 2000 and what could it be six or seven something? Maybe, yeah. Maybe, but but uh, and and I played against her and I and I still remember because I was so impressed with with uh, her game. Yeah, she um, she's always extremely focused. So it's, so it's it's cool that I'm playing with her now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we come to the tough part. Uh, and it has everything to do with your, uh, I think, with your juridical background. Um, uh, we uh, know that somehow you are involved with the Fisher uh, and Schwartz case. Um, and there, uh, the thing is the Colin Code. Uh, 
please tell us a little bit about that. What was your role there? Yeah, so so uh, I had the role of a private investigator, you could say. I was I was so uh, if I recall correctly, Boyer put out some accusations on uh, on a web page, uh, and he also posted some videos uh, where he was wondering how could they find this lead. Uh, so I was just looking at the videos for fun, uh, and I didn't expect to find anything. Uh, but then I noticed how. Uh, how one of them placed the board in a in a very strange uh, in a very strange position, and then in the second video, uh, he also placed the board in the same position. And uh, in both those boards, uh, I think they let a heart. So I thought maybe uh, there is something there, and and uh, so I watched all the matches from the Croatia Championship, and and yes, there was something there. There were the European Championships in Croatia by the time. Yes, in, yes, I think 2013, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So more or less, there you discovered uh, a smoking gun. And, I would uh, say. Yeah, and apparently it was that convincing that um, their own federation, the Israeli Federation, and the European British League, and I think the the ACBL, they um, they convicted the pair and. From, and they never went into appeal um, because the proof was that convict uh, clear. I have to I have to assume because Lothan Fisher especially is 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 a very intelligent guy, and I mean, and when he's looking at this evidence, he he, he probably drew the conclusion that he would have no chance appealing. It turns out he might have been wrong on that part, but but but. Uh, uh, but it's a conclusion he must have drawn, and and, uh, and it seems logical to me. Yeah, yeah, yes and no, because this is very in interesting, because now we 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 go to uh, uh, to pairs who in fact did go into appeal to to the to the civil court. Um, for instance, from Tony and Nunes from Italy, they went to pass, and yeah. their case was you you. Could compare it a little bit with uh, Fischer Schwartz because they were condemned by the Italian Bridge Federation and by the Italian Olympic Committee, even, mm -hmm. and also by EDL and ACDL. And still, mm -hmm. they won their case with CAS. And the same applied, more or less, similar situation with the German doctors, Vladov and Elinescu, because mm -hmm. they lost all their cases within the Bridge World, but outside the Bridge World. And finally, in, in appeal with the High Court in Dusseldorf, the Landesgericht there, uh, apparently they won their case. So, how can you explain that a little bit? How is there such a difference between civil and, and bridge law? I think. Uh... I think in both those cases, I mean the German doctors and uh, and the Fantoni Nunes case. I think I think that the CAS uh, and the German civil court uh, had something to say about the process uh, that there were in due process, uh, which I think is a big problem for the British world, and, and we need to solve it. So we have good rules, fair and impartial, so that we will, uh, uh, in getting to the courts, it will hold up. Uh, uh, and then the second part is, of course, and that is probably uh, an even harder part, is how do we explain the bridge evidence to uh, a non-bridge player uh, who is residing as a judge? And, and that is, of course, difficult. But, of course, statistical evidence uh, should be able to be understood uh, yeah, also by non-bridge players. So that's why I'm a little bit confused why... It didn't hold up, but but uh, yeah, that I was surprised as well that CAS did not accept the statistical evidence which yeah. was presented to them in, in the Fontani Nunes case. So uh, perhaps the bridge world can learn something out of there and try to adjust uh, the laws and the way they present things, but not easy. And now not we easy. have, uh, from, from that perspective, uh, we have uh, another case. Uh, which was filed uh, February 19th of this year, is the case of Hubertus, 
after he was uh, convicted by uh, USBF. Mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, have to wait and um, we are very curious how it uh, ends there. Well, yeah. uh, Parola, thank you so much. And uh, wish you good luck uh, with your different careers in Bridge uh, from a juridical person. Okay, I'll see you around.